Yo, what's going on here at Clutch? Welcome back to a brand new series called Exposed. This brand new series is designed to interact with the whole Hero Clash community. You guys, the HCGX squad. Let's go. Thank you guys so much for 2.2 thousand subscribers. And it's only up from here. Greatly appreciated. And just before we jump into the video, I just want to say the Abyss Artifact giveaway. It's coming up. February 6th, however, there's a rumor that there might be two Abyss items up for grabs. However, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> With that being said, let's jump straight into the video. So, so when it comes to this brand new series, we'll be doing one video a week, and every single video of Exposed will be doing a red diamond giveaway. Yes, 500 red diamonds. So in the comments below, leave your information down. Of course, like and subscribe to the video. And the final step is answer this one question. What do you want to see in this brand new series? It could be a topic, it could be a question. Let me know in the comments below. With that being said, let's jump straight into the first episode. So on good old Facebook page, I posted a message saying, hey, we're doing this giveaway. We have this brand new series, ask some questions. So here we go. The first question comes from Cheesy Peas. He says, would love to see a piece on which heroes are good against the big hitters, if that's even possible. Okay, so when it comes to being a big hitter, when it comes to being a whale in Hero Clash, there are two ways to look at this. One is through power, and then the second is through knowledge. If someone has a lot of power, you know, a lot of artifacts, a lot of heroes, then it's kind of hard to defeat them. So you have to beat them from a knowledge point of view, okay? And... One of my favorite stories to tell is my boy Dalius. Unfortunately, he left the Hero Clash amp, but it's okay. He will be remembered as the person who defeated someone who spent 13, approximately thousand dollars on the app and got crushed by Dalius, who was a he was, he was paid to play, but it was it was very minimal. And I'll never forget that night. I remember I was sitting right here and I spent probably about three to four hours helping him out you know, set up his teams, you know, explaining on, you know, the flaws of the enemy. And we pretty much just capitalized on the flaws of the enemy. So when it comes to power, knowledge beats power in majority of battles. But sometimes if someone has too much power, they can just slap some stuff in and get lucky. So knowledge is key when it comes to Hero Clash. Okay. Next question is from Joko. He says, let's talk about hero combination like Voider with Twin with Sparta for more, or P Jesus, for more OP or like you with me, we happy to get <laughs> Wait, what? I guess it's a translation here. I'm not sure, but I understand what you're saying. Now, for some reason, I, <laughs> I see a lot of players focusing on Sparta, which I'm going to be honest, it's not the pay to play move. Right now, Sparta is great for PVE. He is the best hero for PVE. Now, really quick, if you're a PvE fan and you don't like PvP, A, more power to you. Hit Beat the world records of billions and billions and trillions and quadrillions of damage in PvE. Keep shredding. But if you're a PvP play player like myself, then I highly recommend not focusing on Sparta too much because he's just not that good. Yes, he's able to hit hard and, you know, you hit a crit and then hit the nuke, but... It's just there's too many ways to counter that and make him absolutely useless. So for players who put one, two, three Gs into him, enjoy PVE, you know. But you, you're not gonna beat me with Sparta. You're not gonna beat. You're not going to beat someone in the Crucible with Sparta unless the enemy doesn't know what they're doing or they don't have the correct equipment. And even as a free-to-play player, it's very easy to counter Sparta. Okay. So, moving on to the next one we have is from CYX Baby. He says, I would like to see the new hero analysis. He's talking about the new uh, female god coming, the female goddess coming. Uh, that video will be coming out in approximately, probably a couple, hmm? we'll see. Either a week or in three weeks, it depends. Because right now I'm in the Voider series and we'll get there eventually. Moving on to the next question we have is, what's up with Spartaman? Most confusing hero ever. Um... I made a due diligence video on him, just watched that, and I explained pretty much what I'm saying now. I said months ago when I made the video is he's amazing in PvE, he's the best hero in PvE, you know, then Alvarez. And for PvP, it's he's either, you know, really good or he's really bad. And if you're going to get someone who who knows what they're doing, then he's really bad because it's extremely easy to counter him and it's and these countermeasures for Sparta 
you could do for free. You know, you don't have to go, oh, I need a new Abyss Artifact. Oh, I need to spend $2,000 on this new hero. No, you don't. <laughs> That's why he's not that good. And then as time goes on, you know, the ecosystem of Hero Clash is going to push out a more defensive type perspective for 2024. So... Sparta is definitely not going to be that good because one, he drops, he loses half of his HP just attacking, you know, for an ulti. So taking advantage of that, he, he's just not the move. Anyways, okay, this video might be like an hour long. I'm sorry, but I just gotta be, just gotta be 100 with y'all. Okay, moving on to the next, we have is impressive. He says, "Hi, I'm a professional esports player in my country in a game also new to player in hero clash i'm planning on building my second team but i don't know what's best second lineup to build can you recommend me some also i use 30 faction crystals to get some s hero i know it's a mistake because i saw it in your video my bad i'm late watching it yeah man just stop you right there we've all made that mistake at least we're not the person who burnt a draconic piece <laughs> I feel bad for that guy. I wonder how he's doing. Yeah, he sacrificed a Dragonic piece probably back in, I don't know, it was April or May. And yeah, so, and I've wasted a whole bunch of these, the, the scroll token thingies on S heroes. It's unfortunate, but as long as we learn from it, you're good. It sounds like you only did it once, so <laughs> you're definitely good, man, hands down. And then you say, but I still have another 30. Should I get another or go gather more for the twins? Now, when it comes to a free-to-play perspective, I did see this question pop up a lot while reading the chats. And if you're a free-to-play player, don't worry about the twins, don't worry about voiders, don't worry about gods, none of that stuff, because you're gonna mainly wanna focus on is Phoenix and or Natalie, with a emphasis on Natalie. Obviously, the game's gonna guide you in a certain direction based on luck through the, the summoning hall, but if you get lucky pulling Natalie, work on Natalie. If you get extremely lucky pulling, you know, Phoenix, I'm talking three, four copies of Phoenix, and you get, you know, her up to a legendary status, and you might as well get her to Transcendent. I think Transcendent is just the goal before you start, you know, trying to work on Natalie. The reason why you want to work on Natalie is because she is actually the future of Hero Clash when it comes to the brand new heroes and brand new strategies coming out. The Phoenix is phasing out, and as you can see in Hero Clash, they're creating heroes just to counter the Phoenix. And really quick shout out to all the uh, whales and people who love the Phoenix like myself. We're the reason why. Because we've created perfect strategies with the Phoenix and there has to be a counter at some point. And that counter is already here. <clears throat> <laughs> and there's more coming for Phoenix. So she's not going to be the best hero come, I would say, mid to late 2024. So I recommend working on Natalie. Okay. Because I'm so obsessed to progress right now and I feel I'm going to be stuck for years in that stage where I... I where I need help. Thanks. Honestly, man, when it comes to Hero Clash, it is all about the journey. There's no need to rush. Oh, I need to get to level 400. Oh, I got to max this out tomorrow. Because I'll be honest, you know, I fell into that trap for a little bit and I wasted hundreds of dollars on just, just, just dumb nonsense. Yeah, I'll admit, I spent like 200 bucks on an S Hero just so I could get my sixth, you know, hero to level 340. Yeah, man, it, it is what it is. You know, you live and you learn and, uh, yeah, so just enjoy the journey and go from there, okay? And watch the videos, too, because I, the, the least amount of mistakes you make, the better. All right, moving on to the next question we have is good old Terry. She says, this one isn't video-worthy, just more curious. How do arena fights affect Crucible? Is anyone guaranteed top eight in Crucible because of the arena? No, so... Pretty much if you make the top 100 in daily arena, then you're able to make the crucible, which is what the top 64 or whatever, where you battle three people and then you move on, move on, move on. And then as you progress through the semifinals, you know, top 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, champion, it obviously does get harder because you face, you know, players who probably have more power or more knowledge and or power knowledge. And it all comes down to you know, strategy and power, you know? Yeah. So there's no favoritism going on where, oh, if you do better in this game mode, you'll be favored in this game mode, no, 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 no. which I don't, no. I never noticed it. Like I said, the Crucible is one of my favorite events and I'm actively working with Hero Clash to make sure it stays fair and non-glitchy. And just to touch up on it, yeah, I would say probably four months ago, there was a glitch with Crucible where some of the artifacts just weren't registering. 
And I'll be honest, like three of my heroes died that match to Averus. I'm like, dude, why is this? So I sent it in, and of course, Hero Collider's like, dear player, blah, 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 blah. The artifacts are working according to the algorithm. I'm like, yo, I have the video evidence. Yo, it's right here. Look, it did not work. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay, we're so sorry. We see it now. We'll fix it. And sure enough, they did fix it for the next crucible. So that's cool. When it comes to reporting issues, make sure you just report them and give Hero Clash time. Yes, patience is a virtue when it comes to Hero Clash because they actually do care. I'll be honest. I think the Hero Clash community, or community the Hero Clash devs, they do care. It's just slow. And I'd rather have, you know, a dev team that cares and is slow. And that doesn't care and then pushes out just a whole bunch of garbage really fast, you know? So that's good. Mythic Plus Elite. Moving on to the next question. I'm not going to read everything. However, let's see here. Let's see. Liz asked for advice on level 700. So I'm actually going to pull up. So I'm actually going to pull up my free to play account real quick and we're going to go to Proving Grounds. Now I'm just going to give you guys just my basic setup on what I choose. I'm already on 717. Now I could take it to 750 to 800, but I just don't have time for my free to play account. I really don't. Between videos, life, family, like I'll go on there and, and get get the points so I don't let my, my union down for 900 active points a week. But I just wish I had more time to focus on it and it's just, you know, one day, one day, yo, you know. So when it comes to here, here's my, my basic setup. This is why I say I work on Natalie because, you know, it's key. The reason why I have Chalkies up there is because of the stun, stunning ability. And this is level 717. And my heroes really aren't built that great. I'll show you guys the, my top six. Like I guess that's my free-to-play account that I wish I could focus on. Yeah, we have her. Is held in the hands of we have talents. And then what else can I show y'all? Those who are living, and then we have, have her. Been overrated. Oh, Jesus! There we go. And then when it comes tremble to Chakis, tremble before me. We have that. And I'm I'm just gonna quickly show y'all what I works for me. Your future. Now, I can't change it. I'm not saying this is the greatest setup ever because it's not, Language but this will get think. you past 700. Music teaches me feelings. Okay. And then the, the kitty cat. Sunshine, sunshine makes me, makes feel, me lazy. feel lazy. As you can see, I don't even have. Oops, oops, a daisy. I'm just gonna slap something on there right now. Not that serious. Let's go back to the wild proving grounds and let's see if we can clap these cats real quick. And boom, look at that. Yeah, see. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. You know, it's very hard for me to individually help y'all out when I can't see your account. You know, for me to truly help, I need to, you know, look at your account to see what you have unlocked, where your heroes stand, what artifacts you have, what runes you have, what armor you have, what attributes you have on runes slash armor, what talents you're rocking out. And for me to do that would take probably a few hours of talking to y'all on an individual basis. And I do sometimes, I do try to help as many people as, as possible, but I'm only one person and I get hundreds of messages a week slash month. So I try, I try. <laughs> okay, now moving back to the next question we have is the elites. Let's go Jay in the building. There's maybe a video going over the order of heroes new people could focus on. Obviously, Elvira's first eye, too easy bro, I got you. If you're a free to play pair, this is the order I'm not going to give you a specific order because the game's going to guide you in a certain direction. You're going to get lucky in the, the summoning hall. However, on average, generally speaking, obviously Alvarez is number one. And then you're going to want to focus on a good defensive hero. I recommend I Mafalda for S hero. I think she's money, especially in PvE. If you start doing good in PvE, you can start unlocking rewards faster. And that's the key when it comes to being a new player. And... The third, the second S hero I recommend, Who's dancing with me tonight? Avilia, because she gets the speed and attack up. Next is Language the parrot. Language makes me think. Makes me think. Music teaches, Music me, teaches feelings. me feelings. Because he grants armor and he grants some um, other goodies. Um, let's see who else. Um, for your first S plus defensive hero, I 100% recommend. There's no place to hide. To hide. Fagin, because he gets the armor off, and. Yeah, pretty much. Like I said, you're going to eventually unlock all the S heroes. It just takes time. But if you have the opportunity to take advantage of choosing a specific S hero, I reckon Mafalda, Chalkies, uh, the Kitty Cat, Avilio, and the Parrot. I think those probably would be the top four. Now, when it comes to the S plus heroes, Elver is number one, obviously. Number two would be Fagin. 
And then number three, I would definitely probably put at Dragonic. However, I know y'all probably like, oh, Trin, what about the Phoenix and Nelly? Yes, they are in their own category. They are the top heroes in the game, so they get their own category. So when it comes to the faction tokens, you know, whenever you use an excellent scroll, you want to save those, and then you want to use them on Phoenix or Natalie. People are going to say, oh, use it on Twins. Don't, trust me. Wait till you, you get these heroes to transcend, then start focusing on God slash Voiders. And yeah, okay. So going back to the questions we have is Danger Ranger. <laughs> he says, like to see recognition for countering heroes. Now, Actually, I'll be creating a brand new series probably in February or March after the due diligence series and after the gem talisman series for uh, each faction where we go over counters and there's pretty much a counter for every hero. And um, I'll give you all pretty much the pay to play way and then the free to play way. Some heroes don't have a free to play way to counter unless you're very strategic and you find a hole in an enemy's plan. But there's ways around everything, which we'll, I'll explain in the future, okay? Moving on to the next question we have is, Erica, all the terminology, entangle, charm, stun, petrify, poison, please explain that, basic attack, or, okay, I got you, really quick. So, when it comes to stun, petrify, entangle, it pretty much all means the same stuff. You can't take action for two turns. However, if it's something like disarm, you pretty much just have to read the ability and it will say, you know, this hero can't use skill, but it can use basic attacks or it could be reversed. You know, this hero could use basic attacks, but can't use skill, right? There's two heroes that do that. There's one Nightfall and one Beast Skin hero that does that, okay? And so when it comes to basic attack and skill attack, a basic attack pretty much is if your energy bar is below 100, then they're just going to do a basic attack. So when you have the CS core skill, that's their main core skill. As in when you see the huge picture pop up, you know, the Phoenix, whoosh, boom, that's the ultimate. We call it the ulti and well, AKA the core skill. And if it's a basic attack, then yeah. Ho yeah, hopefully that makes sense. And then next you ask about skill damage and crit damage. Okay. so. Well, the next question we have is from Velvet's faction bonus in battle. The way to fight again on hunting battle, seal land. Okay, so I'll be answering that question in a few weeks in a different video. And yeah, but my main answer currently right now when it comes to hunting battle, just copy the person up first. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki coming in with the question says, would you would like to chat about how to get a good split when having to create three or more teams? Also, how to go about organizing your gear as there's no way to filter attributes. Another topic that will be useful is around best strategies for merging gems. Okay, so all these questions, I do have series that evolve around them. However, I'll just give you just the, the cliff notes right now. And she says, thanks for the great content. Greatly appreciated. Now, first things first, when it comes to creating a team, the more you move into Hero Clash, the more teams you have to create. And... From a PvE perspective, you're gonna to wanna to go with one S plus hero, you know, the big damage, you know, Phoenix, Natalie, da, 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 Alvarez. Usually it's Phoenix, Alvarez, Natalie, and that'll be my top three teams. And then you build teams around them. And so then when you hit, you know, battle, if your first team gets wiped, make sure you do 10 rounds, 10 games. And if you lose all 10 times, each time you lose, you have to look at the enemy. How many enemies did you defeat? Now, if all six enemies are still alive, that means you really need to rearrange your heroes. You might have to bring the Phoenix and Natalie together or Phoenix and Alvarez together to make a stronger team one. And usually from a PV perspective, um, as the rounds get higher, the, the first team gets really strong, but the second and third team that you battle isn't that strong. Now, like I said, it just comes down to, you know, placements from the first team. And if your first team slaughters, you know, 100% of the time, but your second team loses and you can't figure out a combination, then you pull from the third team to the second team and, you know, trial and error again. And if you keep losing on that second round, then you're going to have to pull someone from the first team without trying to cause an L and strengthen the second team. It, it, it's pretty much trial and error, really is. That, that's what I do, and you know, whenever I have time to do PVE, Adventurelands, that's what I do, yeah. <laughs> now, when it comes to organizing gear, honestly, I use all the heroes 
So I put my best gear on my, my top heroes. And then when it comes to S heroes, I don't use or any heroes that are epic or, you know, excellent. Then I put armor on them. However, once I fill up all the S plus and S heroes with armor, even if it's not even ranked up, then I start burning it because there's no point in holding on to any armor if you already have every single hero with armor, you know. But there's really no great way of organizing the armor, so that's what I do, yeah. Uh, and your third was, another topic that will be useful is around best strategy for merging gems. Okay, so I already have a progression series. And I pretty much go over that, so make sure you check out the progression series. We have three episodes out right now. Episode four coming next week. Okay, moving on to another question we have is, please guide us in sealed land and hunting battle. Like I said, I'll be creating a series around that soon. I don't know exactly when. I would like to say a few weeks to a month, but you know things change in Hero Clash so much, and uh, yeah. Okay, moving on to good old Elite A6. Let's go. Like to see recommendations for lineup based on builds, of course, or weed. Be here forever, but just see too many mistakes, especially with new heroes or new players that don't even know what, don't even know who, what, why, where they're putting a hero on the field, what they do, or where they're supposed to be placed, or the type of heroes you're supposed to surround them with. So I will have a brand new series just going into details about this topic. And I agree, I do see a lot of mistakes that new players make where they just put stuff together. However, it's okay to make mistakes, just make sure you learn from them. And I recommend just binging my channel. If, if you're ever you know, bored one day, you have nothing to do, or you're just chilling, just feel free just to hop on the channel, binge some videos, because all my content is to help y'all out. Now we do have a few series that are just entertainment wise, like S Plus Sunday. We wanna try to, you know, guess what S Plus heroes we pull. And oh, a lot of y'all love that. Y'all love seeing, you know, the, the stuff pop up and you gotta guess the hero based on what, you know, special effects I have going on. A lot of y'all love that, so that's why I keep doing it. It's so fun. Thank you guys so much for the support. Amazing. And I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> a new one coming soon. We pull the heat. <laughs> but Going back to Elite 86's conversation. Now, one thing I can't get behind is, you know, don't build an S plus hero if you don't understand it. Now, I'm not trying to call this guy out, but there was someone that I read in the co in the community. They literally built Sparta and didn't know why they were Sparta was losing 50% health every time. You got lucky. You built a good hero for PvE, but I highly recommend 100% understanding the hero before you make any big moves because getting an S plus hero, especially like Sparta, to eternal rank, you know that that's 16 pieces, and then it's two more pieces to get her, you know, awakening skill or his awakening skill. It, I, I behoove you do your DD, your due diligence. Oh. Due diligence. Woo! Let's go, baby. <laughs> However, if you have any questions about any heroes, make sure you watch my due diligence series. I literally go over all this. I don't want y'all to be in the dark. And I don't want you to be like some players who spend two, two point five thousand dollars on a hero just for the hero to be good but not useful. You know, I just I'm trying to help y'all out. I really am. <laughs> I love this game and I want to see this game grow past two years three years i want to see this game last and i think hero clash has a good team behind them they just need to pick it up and i feel like the community needs we just we all need to work together to make this app even better okay now moving on to the next question we said um let's see i know joshua had a question about how come some heroes perform great at a lower level compared to other heroes now to answer your question it all comes down to the build. Like I said, my transcendent Natalie will slap probably a third of the pay to win players if they don't know what they're doing. You know, it's all about capitalizing on what someone doesn't know, right? And yeah, pretty much, I, we talked about this in the beginning of the video too. So it all comes down to knowledge. And yeah, okay. Moving on to the next question. As a new player, I don't know much about events and how to make the most from it. It would be great if you can cover every event from both perspective of free-to-play and spenders. Alvarez is one of the most powerful and very fast hero to max out, but in which event would we focus on other heroes instead of her from a free-to-play? When it comes to Alvarez, 
you don't I don't recommend putting any Benjamins into her because you can unlock her 100% for free and you don't have to use tokens. You don't have to use anything. She she's in so many locations, you know. I'll show y'all right now actually. Uh, we got to wait for it to load up. But when it comes to Alvera, she's designed to be free and one of the strongest free to play players or heroes in the game is so you guys have someone to work with and, you know, get you to understand the game and also have fun because it's not fun no one has fun losing especially if you're new so alvarez is there to guide you through the game as you learn and then eventually when you get to you know you know a year in then alvarez kind of like fades off into like team four team five but by then you have natalie or phoenix and you know and she's still a great hero she really is and even for a free-to-play player if you team her up with natalie there, there's so many good combinations with alvarez but just know you don't have to put resources into her that require any, you know, moolah or anything. So if you go over to Giant Merchant, you also have her in the dismissal store and she's right here. Honestly, I've said this many times before in the past. I'm going to say it again. She is the only thing you should be buying in here. Now, there is an exception. It could be the kitty cat if you just not getting lucky at all you can't pull her for to save your life then you could but i highly recommend always get alvarez even after you rank her up to eternal plus the awakening skill because once you get her to eternal awakening skill you unlock the s plus dismantle shop which i'll give you all a sneak peek of if you're new is right here this is the secret to free to play greatness right here just pulling you know a few dupes even in a few months, you're going to get these free exclusive stone chests that can rank them up. And as you can see, my Alvarez is because at level 30, words, right? I, as you can see, I have her at level 30, right? And do I have anyone else so. at level 30? Let me see. I don't think so. So I have two at level 30. However, check this out. Go to the bag. I have 345 stones remaining. Approximately, I did this because I wanted to save up for a whole year. And I think I pulled just around a thousand stones in one year. It could give or take, you know, maybe a hundred, but it's approximately about a thousand per year as a free to play player. So as you can see, I still have this too. She's always, <laughs> I have so much to do in my free to play account. Moving on to the next we have is, oh yeah. To answer your question when it comes to um, free to play slash pay to win events. Now, I purposely don't cover that topic because a, a few things within Hero Clash needs to happen before I'm able to cover that topic. And that's all I can say, okay? Moving on to the final one we have is Bedot, Bedot, I hope I said that correctly. He says, I'm new here, so I don't really know what to ask. Maybe suggestions on how to efficiently play this game. Well, man, the only really good advice I can give you is just start with the beginner's guide. You know, I have 30 plus videos, you know, even, you know, a brand new day one guide, you know, at the beginning of the beginner series. I think it's like episode 30, but it's, it's number one if you just hit the playlist. And I recommend just here and there watch a video absorb it watch another video absorb it and then you can start getting into where you know the heroes you pull as you progress in your hero class journey just go to the due diligence series watch it real quick you know see the advice i give and go from there and my biggest thing when it comes to hero clash is have fun okay have fun be responsible be respectful and absorb the knowledge because i don't want to see anyone make any big mistakes like i did you know Trust me, you don't want to make the mistakes I made. I made a lot of dumb mistakes because I was impulsive, da 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 da. But be smart about what you do and just have fun in Hero Clash. Well, this concludes the episode one of Exposed. That was awesome. Let's do this again. In the comments, make sure you uh, follow the steps, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Greatness manifested. Mythic Plus Elite.